Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Joanna Ho. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. Three more Hong Kongers are reported to be held captive in Southeast Asia, taking the total to 11. COVID patients will again be treated at Asia World Expo as infections climb. And tycoon Xiao Jianhua, who was allegedly snatched from his hotel in Hong Kong, is jailed in Shanghai. Three more Hong Kongers are being held against their will in Southeast Asia, taking to 11 the number of people the SAR authorities are trying to locate. Most of them were forced to work for crime syndicates after being tricked by online job offers, Macy Mock reports. A day after announcing that eight Hong Kongers were being held captive in Myanmar, the authorities said three more people from the SAR have called for help after falling victim to employment scams. One is an unknown place in Thailand and two in Cambodia. Along with the eight in Myanmar, a total of 11 Hong Kongers are awaiting help to return home. Under Secretary for Security Michael Chuck said while they were able to contact their families, Hong Kong authorities have not yet been able to reach them. But he assured that they are safe, although their freedom is restricted. The Immigration Department and police are liaising with Chinese embassies and law enforcement agencies in Southeast Asia to follow up on the cases. Of the 23 people that sought help this year, 12 are confirmed to be safe. Chuck said most of them were lured by online offers for casino or sales jobs. They were given plane tickets, but on arrival at their destination, their movements were restricted and they were forced to operate phone or online scams. Some were assaulted if they refused or if their work did not satisfy the crime syndicates, which demanded a ransom from the families of some victims. Police were at Hong Kong airport today distributing leaflets to warn travelers of employment scams. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Two people have been charged with bribery involving $3.8 million in relation to the third runway project. The proprietor of Carroll Engineering, Ng Kai On, left Eastern Magistracy after being granted bail of $500,000. He was charged with Airport Authority Principal Manager Ricky Lee, who was also released on bail in the same amount. Lee is alleged to have conspired with Ng and others to accept bribes. He was charged with two counts of conspiracy for a public servant to accept an advantage. Ng faced one count of offering an advantage to a public servant. The alleged offenses occurred between October 2018 and June this year. The case was adjourned to January. The two men were among 30 people arrested by the ICAC earlier this week. A man has been detained for assaulting a police officer and not wearing a mask in Chimsha Chui Station. <laughs> The incident occurred last night after an officer was seen pinned to the ground by a person who kept shouting. Then a man who was pressed against the screen door tried to attack an officer who cautioned him about not wearing a mask. Pepper spray was used to subdue the man after he failed to heed the warnings. The officer also used a baton to protect him himself. The officer suffered arm and face injuries while the man was arrested. New COVID cases in Hong Kong have climbed to almost 6,500, the highest since the end of March. This has prompted the reopening of a treatment facility near the airport, Kelly Pang reports. With the daily COVID caseload increasing, the hospital authority has decided to reopen its treatment facility at Asia World Expo next week. 200 beds will be prepared at the facility next to the airport. Health officials are concerned about the deaths of elderly patients. 
eight people aged between 61 and 93 were the latest fatalities. Four of them were not vaccinated. Principal Medical and Health Officer Albert Au said the death rate of people aged above 60 is 96 percent. Seventy percent of elderly fatalities were not inoculated, while 0.13 percent had three jabs. Hong Kong recorded 6,445 new infections, including 185 imported cases. There are now almost 1,800 COVID patients in hospital, with 10 in intensive care. Kelly Peng, HKIBC. A decision has yet to be made on a report assessing the environmental impact of a government plan to build public housing on part of the Hong Kong Golf Club in Fan Ling. Stanley Wong, chairman of the Advisory Council on the Environment, said more information is needed. In a bid to solve the housing crisis, there are plans to build 12,000 public housing units on nine hectares of the course. But the proposal has been criticized by green groups and golfers. A court in Shanghai has jailed businessman Xiao Jianhua for 13 years for corruption. The owner of Tomorrow Holdings made headlines in 2017 when he was allegedly snatched from his hotel room in Hong Kong. Wina Wong reports. Nearly five years after disappearing from the Four Seasons Hotel in Central, tycoon Xiao Jianhua is in the news again, this time over a sentence for corruption. A court in Shanghai found him guilty of charges in relation to bribery, illegal use of funds, and illegally obtaining public deposits. His fate? 13 years behind bars, plus a 55 billion yuan fine for his China-based conglomerate, Tomorrow Holdings. He was also personally fined 6.5 million yuan. The sentencing wraps up a years-long investigation as part of President Xi Jinping's campaign against corruption. Xiao disappeared in Hong Kong in 2017, allegedly kidnapped to the mainland. His whereabouts remained a mystery until the South China Morning Post reported in 2018 that he was set to go on trial. The foreign ministry was asked whether Xiao would get consular services, given his dual Chinese-Canadian citizenship. But spokesman Wang Wenbin reiterated that Beijing does not recognize dual citizenship, so Xiao does not enjoy protection from other countries. Wen Wang, HKIBC. Palestinian human rights groups say Israel raided their offices in a bid to stop them from exposing Israeli wrongdoing. Israeli soldiers stormed the offices in the occupied West Bank and shut them down, claiming they had links with hardliners. Here's Wen Wong again. It happened in the middle of the night. Armed Israeli soldiers drove into the West Bank and began raiding the offices of Palestinian advocacy groups. They roamed around the units, taking away documents and other items. Seven offices were forcefully shut down, including the Ramallah unit of the human rights group, al Haq. Staff returned in the morning to find a Hebrew notice tacked to their door and their desks in a mess. Despite the raid, the group has vowed to continue its work. We don't uh, take our legality uh, from uh, the occupying power. Our legality is coming from the nature of our work. We are working in law. And also it comes from our uh, people, you know, and it comes from the victims, the Palestinian victims. The raid this morning on the offices of Palestinian human rights organization is part of a full-blown attack by the Israeli government on organizations and human rights defenders that criticize um, the occupation and provide ample of evidence to crimes that are committed uh, in the West Bank, in the Gaza Strip and in East Jerusalem. Western diplomats who visited one of the raided offices praised the work of the Palestinian human rights groups. Israel has so far provided little evidence to justify their claims that the groups have links with hardliners. Wen Wang, HKIBC.
The Monetary Authority's Deputy Chief Executive Edmund Lau is taking early retirement and will leave office on November 1st. The head of the city's de facto central bank, Eddie Yu, thanked Lau for his service and contribution. There will be an open recruitment to fill the vacancy. Financial Chief Paul Chan will chair a selection panel, which includes Yu. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index closed up 9 points. To the top 10 active stocks, Tencent was up $2.40, Meituan down $1.20. Kwai Shou up $3.30, BYD Company down $4.00. To the forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, euros at 7.88, British pound at 9.28, and Australian dollar at 5.4. Over to the UK market, FTSE 100 is up 17 points. Cathay Pacific Airways is reportedly offering up to $5,000 per flight to its pilots to fly to mainland cities. Random lockdowns and extended waiting time because of mandatory testing procedures make mainland routes less appealing. All crews on mainland flights should not have flown anywhere else in the last 14 days. In a bid to keep the mainland routes operational, Hong Kong's flag carrier is offering extra benefits, according to Bloomberg. A convenience store in Los Angeles is counting the cost of an invasion by a flash mob of looters. They were caught on camera raiding a 7-Eleven outlet after midnight. Many left with their arms full of items grabbed from the shelves. Others ransacked the place and littered the store with packets of snacks and bottles of soft drinks. The mob dispersed before officers arrived. Police are offering 50,000 US dollars for information leading to arrests. On to the weather now, expected to be cloudy with a few thunderstorms tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 26 and 30 degrees. More bad weather on Sunday morning before the rain gradually eases later in the day. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Friday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Joanna Ho. Good night.